Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys and girls all the way live from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, still the beautiful state of Honolulu, Hawaii. As always, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And I truly want to say thank you for tuning in for another great episode. But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls will have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So today's video or podcast, or have you may catch this around the globe, it's going to be about water tariffs, right? We're going to talk about water tariffs, tariffs, how do they work, advantages and disadvantages, how they affect you, and we're also going to talk about current tariffs. Because you've been following anything in the news every day you wake up, you've been hearing about, oh, President Trump is uh, imposing a tariff, and China comes back with a tariff, and this is going on with a tariff. You're probably sitting there scratching your head a lot, you know, like many people are doing. But I kind of want to give you a basis in this video or this podcast about what are tariffs and what you kind of look for, how it can affect you. So the first step we're going to talk about, what are tariffs? Tariffs are essentially a tax. Right. Let's draw the whole picture about why someone will use a tariff, all that stuff like that. So let's say, you know, here in America, we make T-shirts or we make shoes or whatever you want to say that we make. Let's say we make shoes, right? You go into a store, you, you see a pair of shoes that are made in China, they cost $100. But you may have another, you may, you may have a pair of Nikes made in China, cost $100. Or you may have a pair of Reeboks that's made in America that may cost $150, right? So essentially, let's say the Nike shoes are made in China, and they ship them over here. They sell them to us, right? You know, that's what Americans do. That's the American way. We buy a lot of things. We don't make that much. That's why we're working in a deficit all the time, right? Because we import more than we export. So, which means that we buy more than we make. We're more consumers than producers versus China, who's the leading uh, manufacturer in the world where they make a whole lot of things and they don't. Um, import as much. So that's when you hear people say, hey, you're, you're trading in a deficit or a surplus. A deficit is like in our personal lives, we are spending more than we make. We're putting out more than we're bringing in, right? That's a deficit. That means, you know, you are not in a very good state, right? But anyway, the thing is, when a country sends things over here, let's say China, who manufactures, who's the king of manufacturing, who can have cheap labor? You know, we all see the stories, heard the stories of uh, the labor laws in China, which are very uh, relaxed, where people are using, you know, people are working, this, I won't say a sweatshop, but they're working 12, 13 hour days, seven days a week. So they can put out a lot of things a whole lot faster, and they're pretty good at it. They pretty much can copycat anything. They pretty much can, um, quote unquote, bootleg anything they want to bootleg. So they can send things, they can get a lot of cheap labor. When you have cheap labor, you also make your product cheaper. So for example, when you bring a, um, let's say if a product may cost $5 to make. If it costs $5 to make with the labor cost, because you got to pay someone to make it, all that stuff like that, it may only cost them $10 to sell it to make a profit here in America. But here in America, you know how we are. We like to get a whole lot by doing less. For a prime example, we barely want to work 40 hour a week in most cases. We want six figures. We want benefits. We want holidays off. We want sick time, vacation time, all the other great stuff. I'm not playing, placing the blame because I wanted to, right? So we like to do and make a lot. So for prime example, we're not going to work for pennies on a dollar. We want to make six figures. We want to make a nice salary, and we don't want to work that much time. Versus then you look at the labor laws in China when people, they work a lot of hours, and they have low pay. So when someone works many hours and they're low paid, then they can put out more product for cheaper. In America, we don't even want to work. We don't want to work no weekend, right? We only want to, We barely want to do a forty-hour week, thirty-hour week, preferably. So when you are when your production costs more, because it's going to cost more to hire me, because I want to, you know, I want twenty-five, thirty, forty dollars an hour here in America versus someone in China, they can do it from five to ten dollars, you know, if that. You know, pennies on a dollar for their labor cost. So they can make their product cheaper to turn around and make a profit from. So well, I'm going through that to kind of give you a little background of kind of how things go, right? So here in America, to make our products, it costs more. So if you walk into a store and you see a pair of shoes that cost $100, 
versus another pair of shoes that cost one hundred and fifty dollars. Most people, I'm not. I think shoes are probably not a good idea because shoes people have a taste what they like, apparel stuff like that. Let's say some plain t-shirts. Some plain shoes t-shirts cost one hundred and fifty dollars versus a, a t-shirt that costs one hundred dollars. I know that's a crazy price. This is just bear with me. This is just for an example. So more people are going to buy the cheaper product, right? Hey, well these t-shirts cost one hundred dollars. So now the Chinese companies, you know, which is great for them because the companies make a lot of money. So people don't buy as many of the American-made products because the American-made products are more usually more expensive. In most cases, they're more expensive because it just costs more to make in America. Because I just kind of told you, especially with our labor laws, you know, we want to do a little for a lot, right? So it costs more to make. So now the Chinese companies, they are doing great. They are selling a lot of products in America. The American products are not really selling that well, which means that they have to lay off some, some people which means that, uh, you know, they have to lay off some people. That means they're not hiring. That means the company may go out of business or whatever the case may be. This is when tariffs come into place, right? Tariffs come into place because now the government can, um, the government can now benefit, or not benefit, but the government can now give it domestic companies an advantage over a foreign company. So we, we spoke about that story of the American company is selling this T-shirt for $150. We all know when price goes up, demand comes down because people cause it costs more. So now, because they're going to the cheaper product, so now the government can step in and bring in what we're talking about on top of date tariffs. They can bring in a tariff, and a tariff. What a tariff can do is it can go out and it can say, hey, if you're bringing something here from a foreign country. We're going to charge a 15% tax, a 20% tax, right? So now that product that China was selling here in America, and they was only charging 100 bucks, and they was making a nice profit, now the government can say, hey, you know, here's the tax if you're a foreign company selling in America. If you're a foreign company and you're selling in America, now you have to pay this tax. When a company has to pay a tax, that that uh, has to increase the price. That increases the price of productivity, meaning that, hey, well, now I have to pay, uh, let's break it down to some, let's say in that case, the T-shirts. I was selling T-shirts for $100, but now I have to pay these uh, import tax to America, to the government, and now I'm going to pass that on to the consumer. So now that may take my price up to $160, right? So now my T-shirts that I was selling at $100 are now costing $160. Now the American product T-shirts that were selling for $150, now they have a competitive advantage because they can sell a little bit cheaper than China. So in most cases, people will start buying the $150 T-shirt. So when people buy the $150 T-shirts, they buy more, and the more they buy, that means the more they produce. The more they produce means the more people they hire. The more people they hire, that means the more people they have jobs. When people have jobs, they spend money. Now they may go to movies. They may go buy a new car. They may go uh, buy a house. Things like that to boost the economy, to get money uh, moving, because money, you know, is made to move. It's made to be spent. It's a currency, right? A currency is made to move. That's the way that um, we just got to think about it. Another person's spending is someone else's income. If nobody's spending, I don't have an income. So I need people to spend. So and all for people to spend is that they have an income. So it kind of goes in a nice little circle or whatever the case may be. So that's a way to boost the economy where they initiate tariffs. So that's how that's what that's what are tariffs, right? How do they work? How do they work is like you probably heard uh President Trump say, you know, first when he very first came out, he talked about steel and aluminum industry. Hey, you know, we want to bring back making steel put steel workers back to work in America. So but America could not compete because of its prices. Plus, we don't make that much. China uh, was like the number one steel producer in the world. They're the number one manufacturing it. So to give itself a competitive advantage, it put a tariff on the uh, aluminum and steel. When it put the, the tariff on the aluminum and steel, it actually raised the price. Uh, and not raised the price. It shot the, the stock, all the aluminum stocks and steel stocks, shot up in price. Why would they shoot up in price? They shoot up in price because of the possibility of getting new business. Now they have a competitive advantage on the market that the government has given them. So that's essentially um, how they work. 
They essentially are made to boost the economy by giving American economies a uh, competitive advantage in the marketplace, in most cases when they feel they don't have a competitive advantage. Now, with everything, you know, um, we're going to talk about who the benefits. One of the biggest benef uh, benefits are the government, because now it's making money off of tax, right? China has to pay import tax or Australia or Europe, whatever company that a tariff is placed against, when they pay that money, it's coming to the government. So good on the government, they're making money. The second thing is it's good for an American company in that industry. If I was a steel maker and now China, my competitors' prices have been jacked up, now that gives me a competitive advantage. So, hey, when I have a competitive advantage, that means more profits for me. And usually when I make more profits, that means I can make more stuff. And usually I will hire more people. So that means a lot of American workers can now have jobs if they're working in that particular field. Also, uh, who stands to benefit is usually the stock price. Right? You've seen aluminum stocks go off. You've seen steel stocks go off. Um, but people are just getting hired, and the industry is starting to take a turnaround because they're making pretty good money. They can hire more people, all the great stuff like that. Those are the people to uh, benefit. Now we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages. Now, we, we spoke, kind of hit on a lot of the advantages. You know, we talked about the competitive advantage. We talked about the government making more money from foreign governments. We talked about people getting more, uh, should be getting more jobs. And companies, make, American companies making more money. Their stock's doing well, things like that. Because most stock prices move off of the future, a projected future. Wow, these guys are going to make more money than usual. The prices start to uh, increase. Now. One of, some of the disadvantages. Some of the disadvantages is that now people may just, for, for prime example, which you always already have seen with China, one of the things they said is that, oh, okay, well, if you want to put tariffs on us, we're going to put tariffs on you. So if you're making us pay a tariff tax to sell in your country, we're going to put a tariff tax for people for your country for your company your American companies, your domestic companies, to be able to pay a tax on us. Now, now it's a reverse effect. Now you put a tariff on my companies. Now my companies, they don't have a competitive, you know, now they're losing that competitive advantage in China. Now that they are, uh, when they lose a the competitive advantage, that means there's less profit. When there's less profit, that means there's less people being hired. When less people are being hired, that means there's less jobs. When there's less jobs, that means there's less money, and it kind of goes on from there, right? Less jobs, less money, things like that, or whatever, right? So now people are having an issue with pain, you know. So that's one of the one of the big disadvantages. It turns into like a a, a people a trade war. That's the term you always been saying. Trade war ensues. That's how trade war happens. You say, hey, I'm going to charge you 20% tariffs on all your aluminum. He's like, okay, cool. I'm going to charge you. 20% tariffs on all your rice, right? I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying that's a product that we are big that we sell to China. We're just hypothetically putting it out there. So you want to hurt my company? I'm going to hurt your company. Then someone say, well, I'm going to well, I'm going to hurt you more. And now my thing is, if a trade war breaks out, how my personal belief of what I've known, what I've seen, my personal opinion, I think that America will win. Why? Because America spends. Or America buys more than what it makes. So, for prime example, if, you know, uh, we don't produce that much. We buy everything. So, if, if a war ensues, we don't buy that much anyway. I mean, not, not that we don't buy that much, we don't make that much stuff anyway. So, how much stuff is China really buying from us versus what we're buying from China? So, how much stuff are we buying from China versus how much stuff they're buying from us, right? We buy a lot of stuff. We buy many things from them, and they're a big manufacturer. They're a big producer. If they have to pay an export to the biggest consumer, the biggest customer, versus us, you know, I think that we might have a little leverage there. And I think that's why Trump is, you know, being so boastful about oh, every day you turn the TV on, oh, a new tariff and two hundred million dollar tariff over here, five hundred dollar million dollar tariff over here. So those are the things that. Um, you know, kind of going, it kind of leads them to a trade war to, you know, they have to sit down and have a meeting or whatever the case can be. Now, we're going to talk about, now we're going to talk about how do they affect me, the regular everyday person. For instance, cool, now that I know what tariffs are, now I know what they're used for, now I know all the great stuff about them. The question is now, 
what does that have to do with me? How does that affect me? Now, the first way that affects you is uh, usually when a trade war happens or when trade wars start going down, it drags the whole economy. A prime example, we've seen the Dow Jones, we've seen the, um, the major indexes. Every time these tariffs talk comes up, it puts fear into the market, stocks go down. Every time, you know, China or any other country rebuttals with their own tariffs, stocks go down, right? Because people look at when a tariff is raised by another company, I mean, by another country, it's going to affect somebody's profit, right? Somebody got to pay that tax. That's going to come off somebody's balance sheet. So that's not a good thing. Um, so that's so you know, if you hold a stock, if you work in those particular industries, let's say if I work in the steel industry and all of a sudden now they have a tariff to benefit, um, you know, they have tariffs on other, you know, my biggest competitive competitor. Now, you know, it, it can open up jobs. You know, well, at least, you know, if I can have jobs, so your industry may start to see an uptick and maybe hiring uh, profits, or maybe you may have opportunities to move up, things like that. Another way, if you are a uh, stockholder in a particular aluminum industry or maybe some type of commodity, whatever industry that's uh, in question, you may see an uptick. You may see, you know, you may see that be affected. You may see an uptick or a downtick, depending on, you know, what's going on, the latest and greatest with the particular tariffs. Because just because tariffs are announced, another country can announce tariffs on your particular company that can hurt your company's earnings, right? Because nobody wants to pay more tax. So that's a good way uh, to gauge it as well. When you look at who's going to pay the particular tariffs. Now, uh, when you do the particular tariffs, not when you do the particular tariffs. When you're talking about um, um, particular tariffs, how they affect you, we just went over that. It's going to affect, you know, maybe your stock, employee, uh, and, you know, um, employee pensions, and the overall stock market, stock market itself. Because, you know, it's fear and greed. You know, when someone places a tariff, when Trump says it, sometimes the market may run up because we're like, ooh, wow, our companies, American companies now have an advantage. Then when China says it, then it's like, oh, no, we don't like that because the market moves off of that. Now, the fifth thing we want to get into is uh, current tariffs. Current tariffs, I can't even keep up with the current tariffs. Every time I turn around, Trump says, oh, I'm going to put a tariff on this, and China comes back, oh, I'm going to do this. Then they're like, oh, we're going to have a trade meeting. Then they have a trade meeting, and they're like, oh, well, we're going to pull back. And then China's saying, hey, we're going to pull back. And then next week is this on Mexico and Canada and whatever the case may be. Then the same thing when it happens to China. So it's just right now it's kind of hard to say who's going to be what. It seems like it's some type of uh, back and forth tennis match or who's going to do what. So it's kind of hard for me to just sit there and pay attention to every single day unless I was in that industry. If I worked in the steel industry, I'm a firm believer, if you worked at a company for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, look into investment to the company that you work at. Because the companies that you work at, try to get some stock options. If you can um, opt in to get stock options in the company that you work in, try to get some stock options. So you know more about the steel industry, the aluminum industry, all the particular industries that's going on back and forth with the whole tariff thing. You know more about them than I do. So. I don't try to, like, get in and know every niche and uh, agree about every single thing. Stay in your realm because you work at the company every day. You know who's been hired and fired, who's doing laying off. You know the projection of the company. You know you guys are hiring more people, uh, making more things, working longer hours, getting overtime. You know those things more so than someone like me who's sitting in Denver, Colorado, nowhere near the steel industry that is pulling open books and trying to read about it or newspapers and trying to read about it. You're actually in there, right? I mean, this kind of sidebar here, it reminded me of a story of I was doing an interview on, on a show, and the guy was arguing with me. One more say arguing. He was disagreeing with me on something that he had read, and he was telling me about something that I was I had been through. Like, for a prime example, imagine if someone who's never been to Wall Street, who's never been inside of a bank on Wall Street, and they're telling you about a bank on Wall Street that you've been inside of, that you're closer to the source. Like, uh, I don't think it works that way because I was in there. I, you know, I know people there. I've met people there. I've spent some time in versus someone who's like, well, I read in a book that this is what happened, that, you know, whatever the case may be, which could be true, but you're like, well, I'm closer to the source than you are. And that's the case of many of you uh, ladies and gentlemen out there. So anyway, we, we spoke about it. We spoke about water tears. 
how do they work, the advantages and disadvantages, how they affect you, and the crazy climate right now, uh, what terrorists are going through. So I hope that helped you guys out. Uh, don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this out. That's going to conclude today's episode. Hopefully uh, it makes more sense to you and that you see. Now when you see it pop up about terrorists, you know something about it. Um, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.